Let's start looking at installing a geyser blanket. A couple of technical issues that we need to discuss so that you install the blanket properly is piping and the necessary fitments um, that needs to be insulated as well to ensure that you get the maximum efficiency with installing a geyser blanket. What is ideal about this, it's on the outside of the roof so it's nice and, and easy to demonstrate the insulation. 90% of the times you'll actually find that the geyser is inside the roof, but the installation is exactly the same. We have mentioned before that the blanket itself is designed for outside conditions as well with a foil layer, which is hail resistant, water resistant, UV resistant. So let's start at the cold water side. ESCOM recommends that the first incoming meter of pipe insulation is also installed on the cold water because when the geyser heats up and the water expands it actually pushes hot water back into your cold water system. So this is like a hose pipe with water which is just an absolute energy loss. So we're going to be insulating the first meter of cold water piping. Very important with the breather is all of this is copper connection. We're going to be installing the pipe insulation from the top of the vent valve, leaving the vent valve open right through to the geyser. On the hot water side, again very important to note, another vacuum breaker. We're going to be installing up into the vacuum breaker and then the rest of the, the hot water pipe. The other little culprit for heat loss is the safety valve and that is when the geyser does fail and the element keeps on heating that because of pressure and temperature this is a safety release. Now in a normal house you will find that this pipe is channeled out um, as a safety measure. Because there's no permanent flow of hot water we're only going to be doing about two to three hundred millimeters of this pipe just to stop that major heat loss out of the tank. When these systems are installed in your house it'll be installed on a drip tray and it's impossible to do the blanket right round. ESCOM recommends that we only cover the top 80% of the geyser because the bottom part has always got the colder water. So as long as the top 80% is insulated, there's maximum uh, efficiency with your geyser blanket. And critical is the fact of the strapping because the blanket will not stay in place without the strapping. So it doesn't help installing the blanket and after a year or two, the blanket starts loosening up. So the straps will make sure that the blanket stays in place for the whole duration of the lifetime of this geyser. And even if this geyser should burst, you can tell the plumber when they install the new system to take the blanket off and install it on the new system again for you. One thing that is important um, and to make reference to, this was our very first product that we did, the foil bubble. Yes, it is effective because you've got the foil layer and for some insulation value. But when we submitted our proposal to ESCOM, this product was actually rejected because of the low thermal value and the capital cost in, in terms of installing this product. So all this, this is effective insulation. The fiber and foil is much better because here you're sitting with about a five, six millimeter thickness where with a fiber and foil, it's a hundred millimeter thickness. So for the couple of rands difference by installing the thicker product, your energy saving over the long run is much better by installing the thicker product. And the way that we're going to be installing the geyser blanket, we'll open up a kit now, is we're going to put the blanket, center it on the geyser, fold the sides over, put the straps, do the pipe insulation, and the job is done. Ian, two, three, go. Mm -hmm. 